When a runner has knee pain, a lot of the time their knee may be unstable because of lack of hip strength and stability. So today I'm gonna to show you five simple exercises you can do at home to strengthen your hips to therefore prevent knee pain. This works for knee pain that's around the kneecap. Maybe it feels under the kneecap or maybe you have a history of knee pain and you just wanna prevent it from coming back on. Today, the only equipment you're gonna need is a foam roller like this. You can also use the longer ones or if you have a Swiss ball, like a big exercise ball that will work as well. And then a resistance loop. I have the light resistance loop so I can go through a, the full range of motion in the exercise I'll show you, but let's get started. For Exercise number one, grab that foam roller or grab that Swiss ball and you're gonna place it against the wall like this. Now, if I wanna work my left glute, then I want to have the wall to my left and my left knee is on the foam roller. From here, I'm gonna get in a split squat position, which is basically a lunge position. And I'm gonna be pushing my knee out into the foam roller as I push my big toe down into the ground. So two things to focus on there. Knee is pushing out and then my big toe is pushing down. So my weight isn't going on the outside of my foot. I wanna make sure my lower extremity is in really good alignment. From here, hips are facing forward. I'm lunging down and up as I think about pushing my knee into the foam roller and then my big toe down. Now, if the foam roller falls as you squat down or lunge down, that tells me that you're not pushing your knee out into the foam roller like this. And that's really important because as our knee pushes out into the foam roller, we're still working into hip abduction, which keeps our lower extremity in really good alignment. So if you've ever had your knee cave in, it's probably due to lack of glute max or glute med strength, specifically into hip abduction. So this exercise does a really good job of working into that hip abduction as we go into that split squat. For the next exercise, grab your resistance loop. Like I said, this is light resistance and I'm gonna place it around my ankles. From here, if I'm strengthening my left glute, this actually works both ways, where if I'm standing on my right leg, I'm still strengthening my left glute and my right glute. I'll explain in a second, but the point of this exercise is to bring that left leg or the one you wanna strengthen back in a diagonal position and then come back to the starting position. So from here, my pelvis is facing forward, my stance leg is slightly bent, hands on my hips, and my foot is continuing to face straight ahead towards you the entire time. So as I bring my leg back, it's going, I wanna say like 45 degrees back in that diagonal position, and then it comes back with control. I'm not leaning forward, I'm not leaning to the side as I do this exercise, and then I'm not bringing my foot, I'm not rotating my pelvis, I'm rotating my foot out. So again, foot stays facing straight ahead, diagonal back, and this is why you want to have light resistance on your band. I understand having heavier resistance, it's gonna feel harder, but we wanna strengthen and stabilize through this full range of motion into this diagonal position. So it's better to have go into a larger range with less resistance on the band than to go into a shorter range with more resistance on the band. Again, we can do two sets of 10 here. And then you might also feel that the stance leg is working that gluteus medius because that glute mean also works into single leg stability. So feel free to do both sides on this exercise. For the third exercise, we're gonna knock out a little bit of glute med and glute max hip stability. So you're get, gonna get into a bridge position like this. And then if I'm trying to work my, let's say left glute med, glute max and pelvis, I'm gonna bring my right knee into my chest and just hold it like this. And from here, I'm gonna push my heel down into the ground and lift my pelvis up with my glutes as I lift up with control and down with control, up with control and down with control. What I don't want you to feel is pain or tightness, discomfort in your low back because that tells me you're not using your glutes like you showed, maybe you're lifting with your low back or hyperextending your low back just to lift your pelvis up. So if that is the case, just make sure you decrease your range of motion as you should only feel this in your, your hips and your glute, not your low back. You might feel it some in your hamstring and that's fine because you're going into hip extension, but 
Make sure you don't feel this in your low back. Now, as you lift up, I'm gonna show you on the other side. As you lift up, so you can see, my pelvis is staying level. I'm not dropping one side down, level up, level down. And that's where the control comes in. So make sure as you lift up and down, it's like you have a glass of water in your pelvis and you don't wanna spill the water by tipping your pelvis or dropping one side. Again, you can do two sets of 10 here. This is a really good exercise to do for pelvic stability as well. Moving on to the fourth exercise, grab your resistance band again, and this time we're gonna place it around both knees. From this position, you're gonna have a wall nearby, and I'm, my front leg is gonna be about two feet from the wall, and then my back leg, I'm gonna have my foot and the ball of my foot on the wall. From here, sitting up nice and tall, so you can see my knee is bent here. I'm gonna bring my knee out to the side, hold it, and bring it back down. As I bring it out to the side, Again, using that resistance band that has light resistance so I can go through the full range of motion into that hip external rotation because I'm pivoting off of my foot. So my hip is rotating into external rotation and back down. And again, control. Control is the name of the game when it comes to hip stability. I'm not just rushing through it. I hate seeing patients do that because if you're gonna spend time actually doing the exercise, at least do it right. Bring it out and back. Making sure when I'm bringing my knee out and back, my hips, my hips are staying in line with my shoulders. I'm not rotating or leaning to one side. Out and back, two sets of 10 is a great place to start with this one. All right, we made it to the final one. This is exercise number five, and these are toe taps. Now, like I've said before, control is the name of the game when it comes to hip stability, and this exercise requires a lot of control. It's easy to think that this exercise is easy if you don't pay attention to what is happening at your lower extremity or your pelvis. So let me walk you through what this exercise looks like. When it comes to toe taps, it really just means I'm gonna stand on the leg of the side I want to strengthen. So in this case, it's been the left side this whole time, so I'll continue the theme of the left side. Hands on my pelvis. I'm gonna tap the opposite foot out to the side and back. Now I'm gonna tap it up and back and kind of like diagonal back and then back to starting. As I do this, first of all, I'm just tapping my toe. I'm not shifting my weight. I'm not lunging down. I'm just tapping because what's happening on the stance leg that's really important is that one, pelvis is staying facing straight ahead. Hands on the pelvis just so you can feel if there's any rotation or any dipping on one side. It's easy to rotate your pelvis towards the opposite side, especially if you have a weak glute. So make sure your pelvis is staying facing straight ahead. And then the other thing to recognize is that your knee is in line with your second toe. So if you look down, your knee should be in line with your second toe the entire time because it's like an isometric hold on this side. And then your big toe is pushing down into the ground. The weight isn't on the outside of your foot. Big toe is pushing down into the ground. Now the last thing I'll say about this, as you do this, you're loading your quad and you're loading your glute. You're not just doing this, okay? We wanna reinforce really good movement patterns with these exercises, so make sure you know, you have a little bend in that stance leg, your glute is loaded, you can feel that glute max being loaded, you can feel your quad being loaded, your pelvis is staying facing straight ahead, big toes pushing down into the ground, and tap. And now you just hold this isometric position as you really just work on that lower extremity alignment because that is gonna be really important so our knee can stay stable and therefore prevent injuries. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can always do two sets of 10 with that exercise as well. If you want more exercises to help work on runner's knee or maybe more rehab exercises, click this video to watch next.